Hi everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model the Bench. Welcome back, part nine now of the build of this Sea King and uh, it's going together really, really well. After the little hiccup with the sponsons, um, everything else, the tail fits beautifully and everything's perfect, so all good there. Um, I think I might put a drop of Mr. Service around his engine covers because although there would be gaps there, it doesn't really look good on a model, does it? So I think I might put some Mr. Service around there and then remove the cotton bud. But um, yeah, it's really going together very, very nicely. So now, by now, you should have seen, if you're following it, I've got my beginners series going out. I've shown you how I do masking and I've used the non windscreen wiper version to show how I do the top bit there. Um, the reason I use that is because I'm not going to use it on the model. I've had an email this morning from Ian. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very, very much. Reminding me that the upper part of the uh, glazing here, this area here, is tinted. And had he not said, I might not have noticed. And I've noticed that Airfix have not told us to do that in the instructions. And on the models they've built, there's no tinting. So um, I had a look online, Googled Seeking HU.5. And sure enough, they are tinted and they are not tinted like a green color. They're tinted gray. So I've got this LP67 smoke, which is basically it's designed for tinting things like tinted windows on cars and that. So you really need to spray it. So what I've done, I've masked up both the canopy. So I'm going to get, get it on here first and just get a feel for what it's like. I've never used LP67 before, um, but it's going to stick to the plastic a lot better than the X. Is it X19? Isn't it smoke? Um, it's going to work a lot better than that I think because it's a, it's a far superior paint so we're going to give that a go um, first things first we need to make sure this is absolutely grease free we do not fish eyes we don't anything so we're going to get go over it with some IPA and then the second before we spray it we're literally going to brush it and then get the paint on I've got this Tamiya cleaning brush which is anti-static and that will make sure there's no dust any particles or whatever because there was a lot of dust on it just now I've gone around and sanded off all the sprue nibs around the outside and I've done these these side panels here as well so we're all ready for masking and I'm going to mask them before I put them on um, actually I might not because I might do some of the masking before I put them on because some of it you can see like here we're very very close to the edge and we've got run the risk of getting glue on the um, on the actual um, on the actual under the masking tape and it will capillary under a ruin or a clear part also here this glazing runs out to the edge um, and the frame is on there, so we don't really want any masking on there, do we? Because so I might have to just do it on the model. That would be a pain. Um, we shall see. I'll do. I'll do as much as I can. I think on the model, on the on the clear part, and then do the rest on the model. It's easier to hold this and cut it than it is to hold this and cut it. Um, so yeah, we'll brush it off the second before we paint it. So I'm going to get on and get this done. Um, I don't really want to go spray an LP. Well, yeah, I will. I'll mix some up in the airbrush. And I'll get everything ready and then I'll show you how I do it and I'll, I'll show you on this one and then I'll do this one properly in the booth and everything and I just really want to see how many coats to put on if the paint's too thick too thin or whatever I don't care about if I mess this one up but I don't want to mess that one up that's the one I'm going to use right so I'll see you in a second right so I've got some IPA here cotton bud a new cotton bud don't ever pick up an old cotton bud you never know what's on it and I'm just gonna go over this panel just like so just to make sure it's degreased. May as well do this one at the same time. There we go. I want to say a big thank you to Ian for reminding me because I would have noticed afterwards probably or somebody would have said after I'd done it which is normally the case. But, uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to say it shouldn't be like this but um, Hey ho. Right. So that's them clean and dry. Just make sure we have the marks in there. And if you notice, I've got all the outside masked because we get overspray on it. And all this here is masked. So we don't get any overspray, obviously. But make sure you mask the outside as well because what will happen is the, the paint will, the particulates of paint in the air will come around and stick. And, um, you won't notice until you've finished. It's sod's law. And uh, you really don't want any getting on the inside. So we can go around there and just make sure there's no marks on there. Just a final rub on this one. Just 
make sure there's no marks on there. There we go. Right, so, whoops, just got some fluff on there on the masking tapes. So that's something to look out for. Right, so now we can brush this one off and then straight away, get one out of the way. Straight away, we'll just close the OK up as well. If you come with the airbrush, I've got about 18 PSI. I'm going to get a bit of paper towel on the bench. All right, I'll have two bits then. We get a piece of paper towel on the bench. We'll get our seeking out of the way as well, so we don't get overspray on that. And then we can come along. And we can, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put one of my Infini holding clamps on here to hold it. That we can keep our hand away. Let's check the flow. Give it another brush. Hang on a second. I thought that was a delivery, but it wasn't. So um, what we can do now is just lightly fog on this paint. This is, as I say, this is um, LP67 smoke. Going to lightly fog this on. You can see now why I'm spraying on the inside because you get like a sort of dull finish to it. It's also very smelly. Okay, so let that dry. I think what I ought to do is take some of this masking off the outside so I can see how dark it's getting. I should be able to peel this mask all away. Get under it, there we are. And then we can see how dark it's getting so we'll know how many, how much paint we should put on what it should look like from the inside. So you can see it's um, it's got a tint to it. So I think we'll put some more on. And this is, um, I've thinned this with uh, Mr. Colour Lovely Thinner, so in the hope that it will level it out and get a nice flat finish on it. But, um, it's looking very, very nice. And as you can see, when we put it on the cockpit, remove this tape. I don't know why I put all this tape on here. If we remove the cockpit, the uh, tape, sorry, and we put the cockpit in here, you can see the effect. If you look there, you can see the effect that we've got. Just looking at the orange seat, you can see the, the, the difference. So I think that is enough, actually. I think that is enough so that's what we'll stick with right so now I know how much I need I can do the other one so I'll get the other one done and I'll come back and share what it looks like when it's done there we go I'm very pleased with how that's come out I laid it on a lot wetter than I did with this one because I knew sort of what color I was aiming for I just kept comparing this to the mass side to get the same sort of shade and uh, very pleased with how it's come out and because I laid it on wetter we've also got a bit of a glossy finish on it as you can see you can see we've got a glossy finish on there from the inside, so that's good. So when we look up inside, we'll see a glossy finish rather than the comparatively dull finish. But um, yeah, once that's dry, I'm going to unmask it and uh, we'll see how it looks. But uh, very, very pleased. If it's got any bits of grit or anything in it, it looks awful. I'll give it a soak in some IPA and start again. But um, I don't think there's any bits in it. It's looking... Well, there's a couple of specks there. That could be little specks of pigment from the airbrush that's not properly cleaned or whatever but uh, if we can see it from the outside and it's going to make a big difference then I'll do it but if not I mean the thing is we've got that air filter on the top which is going to take it right away from this anyway but um thank you Ian a great suggestion um and it's going to look so much better with it done uh, like you say we can see on this one how it looks I mean this one is pretty much dry see how that looks compared to the ordinary clear 
of the front windscreen. Because I'm, I'm listening out for vans, I'm expecting a delivery any time of some goodies from ASK, art scale kit. So there we go, there's our masking removed. And as you can see, we've got glue left on there. As you can see, we've got the difference of the clear and the tinted. And when that's actually on the model, you can see the difference there. When you look at the, when you look at that seat, that orange seat, through the tinted and not through the tinted, it does really add to the model, doesn't it? So uh, that's great. And you've got to be careful with these colours if you're doing a Sea King in American news, because it was hobby time that um, pointed out to me some were um, green, some were blue. Be careful what colour you do if you look at the actual reference of the actual model that you're covering. So um, I'll let that dry for a while and then uh, we'll unmask it and see how it looks. All right, so we're about half an hour late now, so we're, we'll get the masking off. Um, I would normally unmask as soon as I can because, especially with gloss paint, you have to be careful if you leave it too long. When you peel the masking tape off it can actually peel the paint but here we haven't actually masked up to anything other than there um, it doesn't really matter if it does peel the paint as long as it doesn't go back to the clear part but uh, as you can see it's looking looking lovely see my hand behind there with the faded area with the not the faded area the shaded area sorry um, so we'll grab these bits of tape here and peel these off, being careful not to scratch our clear part. And then the same there, peel that back. And there we are, so we've got our, our tinted upper glazing now. So we can try that on the helicopter and see how it's going to look. As you can see, the fit is beautiful. And the tint, you can see the difference in the orange seat. There you go. Very, very nice indeed. So, uh, good job, Airfix. Great job, well executed. You need to add it into your instructions. So, there we go. Right, I will see you uh, back in a minute. We'll do something else. See what? It's bloody typical, isn't it? If you look at this one, look along this edge here. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, you can see nice crisp edge. Nothing there at all. Look at this one. And you can see here, there's bits of fluff. And that's where the fibres have come out of the cotton bud and stuck to the masking tape. And if you can make them out just there, it's from my finger, little bits of fluff. Luckily, I don't think it can be seen from the outside. So I'm just going to leave it, otherwise I'd have to strip it. But if I put it against something white, Yeah, you can just see it poking its head up past that frame, so it's not going to notice when it's on the model because you're looking in, you know, you're looking into a dark space. You're not going to, you're not going to see it. So uh, I'll be looking for it because I know it's there, and so will you. But uh, nobody else will know, so shh, don't tell anyone. All right, so we've got the masking done. Um, as you can see over the top, I've gone round, I've gone round the edge. This is the um, Izu tape. Use 0.7 millimeters first around the edge, then gone over it with a piece of 1.5, and then just cut bits of 6 mil tape to fit. And you can see how that's gone there. So that's that all masked. Uh, you could use liquid mask in there, but I just thought I use tape because if you keep rubbing it while you're building or something, you, you could just peel it off. I've put some bits of 0.7 down there just to get the uh, the inner edges of those screens. Obviously, I can't mask them because we're going to be gluing down here. Um, I say we're gluing. We, if it fits perfectly, I won't glue down there. I'll just leave it. Um, I didn't want to do the bottom here because it's very, very close to the bottom edge there. So uh, that's that done. Um, and we've also done the side panels here. And for these little windows here, what I've done is used a piece of 10 mil tape and just put the edge up against that central piece and then cut around those three sides. Done the same here because that central piece is a very, very narrow rib and I didn't want to damage it. But you can see here the value of going around and pushing in with the cocktail stick to get the corners nice and tight. And then the same here, 0.7 up there, and then little bits of 6mm to fill in, and all done. So, at the end of the day, it doesn't need to be perfect. If you do find you've got paint anywhere, if you come along with a cocktail stick sharpened after it's painted, get it to the corner, you can scratch the paint off without damaging the glazing. So, don't worry too much about that. 
um, but it just shows you how lazy we've become the, and the you know the actual the the onslaught of masking sets for everything now has made us um, lazy kind of in a way it's kind of de-skilled the, the hobby if you like but you know I mean doing something like this is absolutely fine but something like that 148th answer I've got would be an absolute joke so um right what's next I guess I guess we've got to get all this glued on to there I'm not sure how it's going to fit I haven't tried these yet cool look at that that's lovely there's a little bit of a gap under that door so I may see if I can improve that No, it's um that is really really nice fair play airfix you've done good there don't forget i'll be going around all the edges with black to get rid of you can see here this is what i talk about you can see here you've got this this bright chrome like shine there on that edge so what we do is come along with our sharpie where is my sharpie mr unprepared as usual Get a sharpie and then go down the edge that you're going to be gluing. Get to that corner. Go around there as well. Just like so. And I will also go down the edge of this one. And around the top as well. Okay. Now you will see, need to do that one again. Now you will see that the let's just get that in position on there. Get that in position on there. Like so, and you can see that we have now lost that bright chrome. And you can see there's no bright chrome trim there anymore. It'll just look like a rubber seal, just like you'll just see a black line in behind the mast framework you can see on that bottom edge that, that shiny chrome line you've got all across that bottom edge watch this if I want to I'll do half of it so you can see the difference stick that in there and you can see now shiny chrome black yep so I always do that on the clear parts and I've been doing it for years and um, and you should too because it does really improve the look of things so you can see on here when you look at that one you don't have any chrome, shiny chrome edge on this one you do yep right let's get this glued on okay I can hear you all shouting at your TVs now he's gonna forget to put that console in no I'm not <laughs> I don't forget everything, I just forget most things. So this uh, centre console here is going in and as you can see it is quite a sloppy fit so we need to make sure it's pushed up and centred. So I'm just going to, I'm just kind of looking at the rivet lines and there's a hair there. And I'm going to grab a clothes peg and just clamp it in place like so. Now this end we can Sort of manipulate it and get it where we need it. So that's okay. I'm kind of looking. I'm looking at it through the light, through the daylight, guys. So you can't see what I'm doing at the moment. But what I'm basically doing is looking through the through the clear part and lining up the edge, lining up the edge of the console with the rivets that I can see through when I've got the light on it. So there we go. And what we're going to do, we've got a nice hole down the back here, so we're going to get some extra thin. And just run some in there. And some in there. And then leave that to dry. You can see on here where it's run around, so that's good. I might just put a drop more in, actually. It's not going to run out or go anywhere. But, uh, we do want to make sure it's going to stay there. So... <clears throat> that's glued in place. I'm going to leave that now for half an hour just to make sure it's uh, well gone off because I don't want to start sliding it around and damaging the clear parts. So we'll put that down for half an hour and let it go. 
The other thing I've been looking at is the fit here of these side pieces and there is a definite gap and here you can probably see it there is a definite gap underneath there so I'm going to add a piece of plastic card to the fuselage so what I'm going to do is live on camera for you exclusive and all that jazz um, <clears throat> Give me through again. I've got some. This is ten thou plastic card here, and that is probably about the right thickness. It feels like it's biting. I should have some five thou here somewhere. Five thou obviously being half the thickness. I've got some in my box here. He says. Here's a, here's a piece of five thou, just a little bit. So we'll cut a piece off of there. We'll see how that goes in. Do you know what? It's crazy. That gap is that gap has all but disappeared now. How on earth can that be? Just wondering if I have that in there. Does the upper glazing still fit nicely? Yes, it does. If I don't have that in there, does the upper glazing. Yeah, there's a gap at the top as well. So, what I'm going to do is just cut. Let's get this glaze out of the way so it doesn't get scratched. I'm just going to cut a piece of 5,000 card is what that is and I'll do this so you can see what I'm doing and yes I'm going to cut on my new cutting mat oh dear so get a nice sharp knife we'll cut through there and then throw that away and then we'll cut a piece roughly the same thickness as the plastic just cut the end off square and that then should fit nicely onto there okay I don't want it to fall in so we'll get a drop of extra thin on here it's probably going to be dry before I get to it because I'm being clumsy tap that down. What I'm going to do is pull it so that it's slightly proud on the outside. Yeah, the extra thin's dried out, so let's get some on there. There we go. So that's glued in place. I'm going to put another drop on there. Just to get it nice and solid. We do want a really nice tight joint because when we come to sand it, if we haven't got a nice tight joint, it will just fall off. It will just delaminate. And then with some cutters, we can cut the end off. nice and flush, just want to pull that back out a bit there. There we go. As I say, don't take my word for it, don't go gluing bits of 5,000 card to your model, check the fit first because this could all be due to shrinkage, um, the, 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 the temperature of the room when it was processed, whatever, you know, if the if the if the clear parts cool too fast or whatever, it's, it's this happens a lot in a plastic kit manufacturer. And that's why you'll find, like if you watch Plastic Monkey's channel, 
if you remember he did the Ravel 132nd Hurricane and so did I. His wheel bay just fell into place. I had all sorts of problems. Um, and the thing is it wasn't something I could have done wrong because it was all just it was all just parts you put together that was obviously how they went together. So it was very, very strange indeed. Also my lower wing wouldn't fit properly. So I think that was all due to one sprue shrinking more than the others or one not shrunk as much as the others or what I don't know. So I'll let that dry and I'll go on and check the fit on the other side. Do exactly the same again if I need to. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we can trim them off. Get some black on them, just get some black ink on, I'm not going to bother painting. And then uh, <clears throat> sand the outside flush. So there we go. Just want to make sure it's proud on the outside. It's For some reason it's pulling itself back in. There we go. Okay, so see you in a minute when I've done the other side. Or not, however the case may be. Okay, so we've got the the console glued in now. If you, I don't know if I showed you that. I painted it black and then just dry brushed it with a bit of um, silver paint. So just to highlight, because you're not really ever going to see it. I mean, unless you really sort of look in here, up there, or it's, it's going to be practically invisible. Um, which is something I thought very strange on the ICM Skycrane because they gave you a decal for this panel, but nothing for the centre console. So weird. Uh, it was very strange. Um, I might look at this now. I think I might just give it a bit more. I have a brush here, which is my dry brushing brush. Just give it a bit more just to pick up those knobs and stuff. Sorry about the background noise, guys. It's the middle of the children's school holidays, so they're active. But uh, they're a great little bunch. Ever so funny. There's a bunch of girls down here that, that I remember when the, the, the when the jubilee was on. They were all reenacting it, marching down the road and being like the Queen's procession, and uh, it was really funny. And just uh, just now they've all been out there singing. Oh God, <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, right. So what I'm doing here is just cleaning the inside of the parts and then making sure I don't touch them. The last thing you want to do is get your clear parts on and then find you've got finger marks or whatever on them. and uh, Or spots of dirt or whatever. There we go. I'm going to give them a quick brush with the anti-static brush to make them less likely to pick up anything that's going around. You can just brush over that area as well. Um, <clears throat> so there we go, right. There we are. If we have got any bits of dirt in there we'll have to try and blow them out through the open door. But uh, that's the wrong way around, Nigel. I like to keep this in its packet, it keeps it nice and clean. Right, so um, that's that done, so we're ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick check of the instructions, just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Come here, instructions. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of you that have sent me references and pictures for this area here. It would appear that it's all smooth, there is no panel line. There is a raised panel there in the centre, there are raised grills there, but all the rest of this, there is no panel line at all. It's all smooth. So, um... Sand out your joints guys, you don't want any seams there. So we've done all that, we've done all that, we've built those sponsons. Uh, we haven't done the undercarriage obviously, we've done all that. So now it's a case of fitting that in there and fit that on there. And then we're on to the air filters. Right, okay, so we're going to put our clear parts in. Now you'll hear a lot of people say never use extra thin on clear parts because it'll fog. It doesn't fog at all. It's some um, super glue that will fog clear parts and only if they're in a restricted area. Um, if you put super glue on a piece of clear plastic, it probably won't fog it. It may make a white line around it, but you wouldn't put a blob of super glue on the middle of the part anyway. If you put a piece of if you put a blob of super glue on a piece of clear plastic and then seal it in a jar, it will make the whole thing fog. So if there's no air, it will. That's how they used to find fingerprints apparently. So um anyway, so that's going to go in there like that. Oh, the bits of plastic card I've just um. You can see I've coloured them black with a magic marker and I've sanded the outsides flush 
and then I've gone all the way around there with a the black magic marker so we don't get any grey bits anywhere. <clears throat> so that's going to go on there like that and it fits absolutely beautifully. It doesn't need any clamping or anything, it just stays there on its own. It's gorgeous. Such a well fitted kit this. It's unbelievable. That's what makes me think, as I say, with those, with part eight, with those sponsons, as I call them, I don't think other people call them sponsons, I think it was probably my fault. So that's all gone in there absolutely beautifully. Look at the fit. It's just stunning. It's just absolutely perfect. It is stunningly good. And I mean, I, I can't even pull that side panel out now. Like, what? It's so, so good. So what I'm going to do, and what we need to be very careful of here, is gluing and clamping. Because if we clamp after gluing, we're going to get glue oozing out and it'll look a great big weld seam and it'll look horrible. If we... If we clamp and then glue when any, we get any glue on a clamp, then it's going to cap anywhere underneath and ruin the clear part. So he sort of pays your money and takes your choice. I'm just looking here. What I'm looking at here is these windscreen wipers. Oh yeah, it is. It's, it is now. That's crazy. The windscreen wipers are not flush down to the top of the bulkhead. So what I think I'm going to do here, I think I'm going to do this in two stages. I'm going to check it's in the right position by checking the fit of the side pieces. Okay. In fact, what I think I might do is get a bit of 6mm and take that onto there. Another bit. Making sure I don't touch the inside and leave any finger marks on there. Put that one in position. Oops. Oh, here we go. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Oh, come on. Try not to get any finger marks on. Oh, bloody hell, I just touched my finger in there. Urgh. That's the cotton bud I was using. Tell you what, let's start again. Put this on here. I'm leaving the camera going so that you can do you can see what I'm doing rather than me just telling you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tape that to there. Well that will hold that one. We'll get another bit of tape off of here ready. And then we're gonna put this piece here on there, like so, and then we're going to put this one in, on this side, like so, that is all fitting there absolutely beautifully. Take that one to there. I, th I thought that frame looked a bit odd then. I thought it looks really off and it was because it was it was out. So what I'm tempted to do now is with another bit of tape, tape that one down to there. And with another bit of tape, Tape that one down to there and then we can just look at it and see if the fits all good you can see there's no gaps anywhere we've got no huge steps anywhere it's just stunningly nice this side here just needs to be pulled in just a touch it's just you can see it's just literally probably about 10 thou it just needs to be pulled in That's okay because we've got plenty of area there to glue behind it, so that's okay. The 
The front is fitting beautifully. All around there is beautiful. All down here, all around there. There, where that frame is there. Yeah, we've got equal steps on that frame there. So what I'm going to do now is get one of my Rebel Hobby from Sweden clamps. If anyone asks, where did these clamps come from? I'm not going to reply. <laughs> I get asked every time I get them out, and now every time I get them out, I say what they are. And I still get asked, what are those clamps and where did you get them? They come from a company called Rebel Hobby in Sweden. Right. So, I think what I might do, just to be sure, just in case the glue capillary is down there, I think I'm just going to pull that one in. A touch. You see, I want to bring that back a bit because that foam is over the edge. If the glue capillary is down the back, it will capillary onto the glass. So we'll have that there like that. So it's away from any seams. Just gently clamp it in. That's holding it in there now. Okay, remember I'm not pulling this down. It's just literally just finger pressure just to hold it in place. You can see it's not at all tight. So we can see now we've got a lovely fit on the top there around the roof area. Beautiful, beautiful fit. It is lovely. What a gorgeous kit this is. Right, now what I can do now is get my tweezers and take that tape there away. Just in case the glue capillary is underneath there. And I'm going to struggle to do it on here because I've put a clamp on it. But maybe I can pull it out from under the clamp. Can I? Yes, I can. So I can take that one away. I'm going to take that one away. And that will save us any risk of any glue capillary under anywhere. Right. So, I'm not going to put any glue down here. I'm not going to put any glue down here. I'm only going to put glue here. So I'm going to grab some extra thin. And this is when this tiny little brush comes in handy and I'm going to run it in. You need to look carefully what I'm doing. What I'm doing, I'll use a pointer a stick. What I'm doing with the brush, rather than trying to go to the joint, I'm going to touch down and go over to it because I can easily sand any marks out of the grey plastic here. So I'm going to touch down and go over to it and let it go in. I'm not going to go straight onto there because then that might damage any, any rivet detail. So I'm going to go over to there and let it go in. OK, so just watch what I do. You can see what I'm doing. Come along, just down and over, just like so. Down and over. See what I'm doing? And this is what I'd do if it was, wasn't was painted as well. Down and over, rather than trying to go straight to the joint. Down and over. And this is how I always glue my clear parts. I don't like using white glue, it doesn't hold. There we are. So that, my friends, is that, and that is on, clamped, held in place, and that should dry. If you really want to make sure, you can go on and get some more in there. But you'll see when it's had enough, because it won't take any more. There we go. So there we are. Right. We're going to leave that to dry for literally two or three hours just to make sure because the last thing you want to do is under your clamps and have it come away. So we'll let that dry for at least two or three hours. Let that weld properly. I wouldn't suggest using the extra thin quick setting because it tends to be drying so fast it doesn't get the chance to capillary and really work. So I wouldn't use the extra thin quick setting. Use the ordinary one. Let it get in there. Let it weld and burn away any paint or black pen you've got on there, whatever, let it do its thing. So we'll leave that at that. And there we are. So that's that done. Right. I've got a little tiny gap on the back there I can see. Just gonna push that back in a touch. But um 
I have to admit, I think they are probably, if not the best, among the best fitting clear parts I've ever seen. Absolutely stunning. They're crystal clear, there's no real distortion in them. There's a little bit up here which you can only expect because it's a compound curve. The riveting is beautiful, the fit is wonderful. Really, really nice. So, um, well done Airfix, you've done a fantastic job here. As I say, my little moan about those um, sponsors, I think it was probably my fault. So anyway, we'll see how you get on with yours. Right, I'll be gone for a couple of hours, but for you it'll be... Okay, so this has been about an hour, hour and a half. So what I'm going to do now is move this clamp up here away from these joints. Make sure that clamp is nowhere near where anything's going to be glued. I just want to glue the back edge of these side pieces. I think Jess is She's had her funny five minutes. Right. So now I just want to glue the back edge of these side panels. Just going to check there. Check there. I just want to get a nice fit on there. That's nice. Okay. Not really worried too much about these side panels because they are actually doors. So they wouldn't be a perfect fit anyway. What I'm doing there is just coming into the corner, as you can see, and that glue will run along the, the top and down the back. We can just tap. Okay, we've got quite a wide frame there, which is good. Gives us plenty of room to get the glue in. Like I say, don't be too scared of having too much of it because you really you really don't want all this to pop off. Just put some glue in there and let that run around. Put a drop in there and that'll run up the back. There, that's good. Right, so we've now glued that side panel to the bulkhead. I'm hoping when we take that off that, that you're not going to see the glue joint. I hope the bulkhead isn't thicker than the actual framing and then the, because what you'll see then is the bulkhead through the clear part and that won't look very nice at all but it should be okay um, I should imagine they've thought of that um, I'm just going to get I just want to make sure I get a drop of glue into that joint there we should be able to see it capillary along there we go see it then. okay so again we'll leave all that for about an hour and let that um, that just sort itself out. I'm going to put something under there to stop that clamp falling down. We'll just leave that alone and let it dry. Right, another hour, hour and a half's gone by, so we're going to take these clamps off now. So while I was off camera, while it was clamped up, I just put a couple of drops of glue under there and a couple of drops of glue in those corners there on both sides under there. So um, they're all sort of nicely fitted in place now. Now I've noticed that here, I'm not sure if you're going to see this, but you can see that, yeah, you can see that. That windscreen needs to be pulled back and also this side needs to be just just pulled in a touch. So what we're going to do, when you're doing this, make sure where you're going to glue there is no tape. You do not want, like if I put glue in there now, the glue will run along there underneath the tape and go up on the clear part and ruin it. So be very, very careful. Don't go gluing where you've got tape. And also because these are pre-masked to make sure the glue doesn't go under the tape. And the uh, the masking tape. Okay, so we can pull that one out of there. That one off of there. As you can see, it's all fitted. It's almost a solid. But now we just need to pull that back in there. And how are we going to do that without getting glue? It's a capillary under that seam. Well, there's two ways. One one is you can do it with a, um, a broken cocktail stick, or you can get get one of these cotton buds, cut the ends off. And cut it in half. Okay, so get rid of the ends. Like so. And what we can do is put the tape on there, put a piece of wood under there, clamp out of the way, put a piece of wood under there, and then pull that tape across. And that will hold it together and what you've got to do is make sure the wood 
is either side of the seam and that the tape is holding down. Now the trouble is with that, they often move, the tape will let go, whatever. It's better if you can to clamp when you're doing things like this. So obviously clamping that's going to be difficult. Now we've got a bit of a lump here. So I may be able to get the clamp to hold on that just enough because I'm not going to go grunching it down or anything. I'm just going to apply some gentle pressure just to push the windscreen in. And that is actually giving us a good hold. I'm just going to check it by shaking it and it's not going to fall off. And if you notice, the clamp is nowhere near any seams. It is actually sliding down. So he's trying to bring it up a bit. Okay, so that's got that pulled in. And then this side here, I think using, let's put it this way around so all the stick out is on the same side. Just put some pressure on there to hold that in. And now you can see that the base of the windscreen is all held down, it's nice and solid. We've got no gaps anywhere. So now what I can do is come along with the cement and I'm going to have to do this off camera because I'm, I'm going to have to use a magnifier because it's in the shade. So I'm going to have to get a bright light in there so I can see what I'm doing. But all I'm going to do, if you can imagine this is my glue, I'm going to go along and just dab in the glue on the bottom of that seam there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to glue these here. If I can help it, I'm not going to glue those joints at all. Um, they get a much cleaner look. So uh, I'll go and do this off camera and then I'll come back when it's all dried in about an hour and a half's time. And we're back. And as you can see... Slight change in the clamping arrangement. What I've done, I've put a clamp here vertically across the fuselage and then a clamp against that because when I was clamping back here it was too much of an angle and, and the, the clamp was kept pulling itself down towards the glue joint so uh, so I altered it. So let's just see that everything's held. It's been about an hour, hour and a half. <clears throat> and as we can see everything has held. We've got beautiful crisp lines there. We've got no movement in the glazing there. So as you can see, that is basically, um, other than that five thou gap there, which would have probably pulled down anyway, uh, a perfectly fitting bunch of clear parts there. It is really, really nice. What I will do is go around with Mr. Surface around the edges and then a the cotton bud and remove just to fill any little lines or gaps or anything that's there. And what I'll do, I will get um, some second hand tape and I will protect my original masking tape, my original masking from the thinners because otherwise it will remove the glue. So that's what we do and then that's that done then. And uh, so I won't do that on camera, I'll do that off camera. But so uh, that will be the next step in the process. And we can also then make sure we don't get any Mr. Surfacer in the rivet holes if we're careful with our masking. And there we are. So uh, all in all, very pleased. And I think what I'll do is pull this tape over a bit and then I can just use that one piece to cover the whole area. I'm not even sure if it needs Mr. Surfacer to be honest, especially over the top because we've got that air filter going on there. But um, I'll go all the way around with the mist with the tape and I'll roll it around Mr. Surfacer and have a look. If we have got any big steps then where it steps in or steps out. See that's nice because we've got a nice flush fit there. And there's, there's a panel there, like a, a stiffening panel, and that's got stepped out. It's, it's lovely. It really is gorgeous. But um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I can get on now and do the rest of the masking as well. So I'm going to get on mask that, do the Mr. Service, I remove it with a cotton bud, and then I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, just one last thing. I've, I've decided this, it's been just under an hour, so I'm going to end it here because there's a lot of work I've got to do before I can come back again. Um, so I'm going to go around here with Mr. Surfacer. My recommendation to you is when you are using Mr. Surfacer, don't actually get it on the clear parts. It can, it doesn't always do it, but I have had it do it on a couple of occasions where you go to take it off and it's actually sort of etched the clear part. Now it could be very, very handy if you wanted to make like a frosted window. You could try to put some Mr. Surfacer on the remove of the cotton bud. It may, because it does give a very even frosted finish. Um, but uh, yeah, you have been warned. So that's why I mask, is one reason to keep the thinners away from the masking tape when I remove it. But another reason is to stop the Mr. Surfacer getting onto the, um, 
to stop the rest of the surface from getting onto the actual glazing. So I'm not worried about it getting on the frames because if it frosts them it doesn't matter. But I don't really want it getting onto the actual clear. So I'm just painting around here just to fill in the gaps. And then when we remove it with cotton bud it'll all look like it's all part of one and the, the glazing is just sort of part of the uh, the model rather than a stuck on addition and this will also allow me to see if I've got any big steps or anything anywhere it will allow me to see that look I can see, see I've got a bit of a step here so I might just sand that and just blend that in just to make it look a bit nicer put some more along there because we've got a bit of a bit of a joint there and this light grey really does you've heard me say this a lot of time guys that the, the light grey on, on anything will make detail pop. Likewise, if you're looking for issues, if you're looking for scratches or seam lines or whatever, the light grey Mr. Surfacer will, when it's dry, they will absolutely pop out like mad. It's, it's crazy. That's why you will see people like Zukimure, I think I've said this in one of the other videos of this series, You'll see people like Zukimuri will have sub-assemblies of their kits on display at Telford. And it will um they will always paint them in a matte grey primer because it makes them look just so much better. Of course then when you come along and paint it with the proper colours, sometimes it doesn't look as good. So there we go. So I'm just leaving the camera on for the last few minutes so you can see me do this, how I do it. I know some people like to watch. I've just seen a video, I haven't watched it, but I saw somebody who's done a video of a mini art tank and they've done a full video build in 16 minutes. I haven't got, I bet it's got music on it as well. 16 minutes to build a mini art tank. I mean, I don't know, not for me. I guess some people like to just get it over with and done. They want to see it, get it, you know, see the end result, job done. But I think you guys who watch my videos like to see the, the how-tos and the pitfalls and the pulling the air out bits, what, what air I have got. So there we go, we can see we've got some steppage going on here at the front, there and there. So I think I'll deal with that. Um, maybe with some sanding and re-riveting. But for now I'm just going to get plenty of Mr. Surface in it, just in case it's a gap rather than a step. And then this will capillary its way in. So uh, yeah, what I can do is blend all that in. Get it all looking good. So, there we are. Right. I'm not sure if I can actually push that corner in. The glue is probably solid. Oh no, I've got it to go in a touch, I think. There we go. So there we are. Right. I will see you for part... So it's going to be 10 um, and we'll go from there. So the next thing I've got to do now is get all this off of the cotton bud and, um, and see how it all looks. And there's going to be a lot of unmasking, remasking and everything. Not the proper masking, the, the sort of the masking, the, the masking over the masking. <laughs> that, that masking. Okay, so I will see you all soon for part 10 and hopefully you're not bored to death of this by now so thank you for watching and i'll see you all soon bye for now